Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from Calgary for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> Calgary, Canada, make some noise, people. Fuck yeah. Hey, look, everybody. Brian Redband's hey, here, everyone. Hey, 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 hey. Absolutely doodly. How exciting is this? This is the first time, I believe, ever Kill Tony in Calgary, Canada, everyone. You did it. I've been doing stand-up here for years and years and years, and every time I do it, every single person afterwards says, you have to bring Kill Tony. How many of you have seen me do stand-up here and have told me to bring Kill Tony here? Well, there oh, you go. look at that. Staying here all weekend, doing four shows with the great Jeremiah Watkins. Uh, it's going to be an exciting time. Kill Tony continues on the road. It never ends. We, uh, I'm doing stand-up comedy in Tempe, Arizona, February 6th to the 8th. And then Kill Tony goes to Vancouver, Canada, February 21st. Just a short, what is that, a six-hour drive? Then we go to Kill Tony East, just outside of Boston in Providence, February 29th. Beautiful La Jolla, California. I do a weekend of stand-up and then two Kill Tonys on uh, March 8th, I do believe, or the 9th, whichever one the Sunday is. Kill Tony Ventura, March 12th. Kill Tony Boston, April 9th, with a weekend of stand-up on the 10th and 11th. And then from Boston to Austin, April 25th, Austin, Kill Tony at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival. How exciting is that? And that is how it works. But tonight is about Calgary, Canada, right? We're here. Like I said, Calgary's been due for one of these for a long time. Calgary's been due. Calgary's been due. CBD, hey. Today's episode is brought to you by Infinite CBD. Infinite CBD is here to help you stick to your New Year's resolution. If you're in the gym and feeling sore, get their Freezing Point Topical Cream. It's great and easy to use. I know from personal experience, whenever I apply the topical cream to any sore muscle, it immediately starts to feel better. Or if your resolution is to get more sleep or work uh, on your anxiety, Infinite CBD has products for you. If you don't know what CBD is, it gives you all the benefits of marijuana without getting you high. And Infinite CBD offers the cleanest and purest forms available. Other companies use CBD oil, not Infinite CBD. They use a double extra extraction method followed by refining the CBD, which results in products that are over 99% CBD and are third-party tested for guaranteed purity. CBD works for me and Brian, and if you go to infinitecbd.com, you can see which one of their products is right for you. I have a buddy that has Crohn's disease, our friend Eddie Firth, the creator of Historical Roast has horrible Crohn's disease. I gave him some of this infinite CBD. It says it's the only thing that helps him. Mm -hmm. So if you have any ailment or depression or anxiety, go to infinitecbd.com, use the code TONY15 and get 15% off your order. That's infinitecbd.com and use the code TONY15 for 15% off. You guys ready to start tonight's show? This is it, we're here. This is as real as it gets, people. We're alive. This is. We're way too close to you people. This is uh, this is a dangerous situation. And it I goes way back over there. Look at that. That's most of the audience is right there. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Look at that. A bunch of people back there in the darkness. Well, we go no guests with these shows on the road as always. However, ladies and gentlemen, you'll never believe this, but we do have a band with us tonight. Uh, yeah. I figured you guys would be excited about that because Canadians are known for their politeness and uh, good manners, and so is the band, actually. They, uh, they are very good people. This past week, they uh, really had a flex off. The milkman vomited up a lot of uh, milk. It was insanity. They're willing to do anything. Every single episode, they commit to being different characters. We never know what they're going to be. While we were in... Uh, a back secret location on the other side of this incredible hotel they call the Blackfoot. Uh, they've been getting ready in this janitor's closet right behind the stage. So let's all find out what they are tonight. Maybe it's a brand new character we've never seen before. Maybe it's the return of some of their famous characters. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony Band, Jeremiah Watkins and Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. Let's see what we have tonight. Wow. Just incredible. 
My mind is completely blown. This is incredible. This is very, very exciting. I know who they are. This is uh, Ellen DeGeneres' wedding picture. Um, no, this is incredible. This is Prince Harry, am I correct? Oh. Oh, hold on a second here. We're having a little bit. Uh, this might be uh, the royal family might be oh, sabotaging our show. Power button. Hello, it is I, Prince Harry. Oh, wow. <laughs> and my beautiful bride, Meghan Markle, Canada's newest re residence here. Wow, that's right. They are moving to Canada. They did move. I don't think you guys did your homework because there's no fucking way they're moving to Calgary. Uh, <laughs> I think they're moving to one of the fancier, schmancier parts, but this is great. We have the great Pocahontas is here, everybody. <laughs> Clearly. No, Meghan Markle, if she was a uh, Chiquita banana lady for Halloween. This is great. How you doing, Megan? Uh, just yeah, happy to be here, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Love She's Canada. as lovely as the day I married her. <laughs> Shout out to the people that made buckets for us. This was a half an effort right here. And, uh, and from the nice people over at Rebel State Designs. Look at this bad boy, huh? It says Kill Tony. It says Bucket of Destiny. I liked it. So we put the names in that one. Um, and a bunch of people signed up for their chance to get up here and make history. A lot of people that perhaps uh, are not allowed in the United States of America or perhaps uh, can't afford it. This is their big opportunity to be on the number one live pot. You know what? It's okay, Megan. You really don't need to touch anything on this table for the rest of the show. Uh, so they signed up, and if your name gets pulled out of the bucket, there's only one way up here, and it's right here. There's a secret stairway right here in the dead center. You can't miss it. So if you come from that way, come this way. If you come from that way, come that way. Don't go in between people's tables or anything stupid. Don't try to jump over anything. You get 60 seconds uninterrupted. You know your time is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry twisted element bear. <laughs> Very good. And then I interview you and we talk with you about your life. Try to figure out more about you if you have anything special about you or something that's extra Canadian about you. We want to figure that out here tonight and uh, we'll all get through it together. You guys ready to start this fucking show live from Calgary, Canada? <laughs> All right. Then let's do it. We have the royal family. We have Red Band. We have the Bucket of Destiny. I'm pulling out the first name, and the show will begin with the comedy stylings of Brian Dyke. Could be real. Let's see what happens. Here he is. Uh, it's Dick, by the way. Uh, yeah, my last name is Dick. Um, in my defense, is spelled with a Y, not with an I. Uh, but where I'm from, where I'm born, uh, <laughs> they pronounce it Dyke, but here they pronounce it Dick. So I like to say I'd rather be a Dick than a Dyke. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's not the worst part about my name. My middle name is actually Jonathan. So you can imagine the name that they came up with me for in high school, they BJD, aka Blowjob Dick. <laughs> right? Fuck school. <laughs> um, that's not the worst part about school. I played basketball growing up, and uh, I don't know if you guys know the logo bench, the shirt bench, bench. But anyways, my mom bought me this logo, this shirt logo named Bench, and I wore it all the time. And this fucking kid in school comes up to me and he says. Uh, you wear that all the time because uh, you want to show the position you play? <laughs> A little sad. Wow. Royals, it's a one in our love. That kind of looks just not for us. Please step back from that ledge. All right. So, Brian Dick. Uh, I pronounced it Dyke, and then... You basically you fucked it up a yeah, I fucked it up so bad, and then you did 30 seconds about how everybody's called you Dyke and Dick your whole life. But I guess, yeah. I guess you're right. I guess I'm the fuck up here. Uh, yeah. Great stuff. I've always wondered what a Canadian basketball player looks like. Uh, I guess we found it out. Five seven, fucking hairy beard. I like it. Let's check in with Prince Harry. Yes, you have a lot in common with Tony Hinchcliffe because people have called him a Dick and a Dyke as well. <laughs> That's true. That is true. 
The horse of truth is out. I've been called a dick and a dyke today, and that was just while going through customs. <laughs> so, Brian, let's talk about it. You from here from, from here in Calgary, born and raised? Uh, yeah, from Rosemary, Alberta. It's a little village like two hours east of here. Uh-huh. Is that anywhere near uh, Stu Hart and his entire setup? Hart's the Hart Dungeon or Bret Hart? <laughs> Bret the Hitman Hart? Perhaps Owen Hart? No? All right. <laughs> So, uh, Rosemary, what's that known for? Is there a lot of people that live there? A lot there? of Mormons and Mennonites there. Mormons and what? Mennonites. Mennonites. Uh, Mennonites. Another Christianity, Mennonites. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like Amish. Uh-huh. uh-huh. What, do you sure. do for, what do you do for work? Uh, I work at um, Save On Foods as a delivery driver for obese and rich and fat. and Obese, rich, and fat people. Wow. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Wow. So you deliver to a lot of people like that, huh? Yeah, mostly rich and obese, yeah. Right. The, at the same time, they're both rich and obese? Uh, y- yeah. Some, yeah. Do you some just think they're rich because you're delivering their groceries? Yeah. yeah. You think there's a chance they're just middle class, but since you're the delivery driver, you're like, oh, these rich fucks. Yeah. <laughs> they're two-bedroom apartment. Yeah. The way they look at me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> How long you been delivering groceries for? <laughs> um... For about two months now. <laughs> two months. What did you do before that? Uh, I worked at um, a trailer park company building modular homes. Modular homes. Jesus Christ. This is the same story as the beginning of the <laughs> documentary about Kid Rock or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Dude, I fucking I built trailers. I fucking worked my way up to grocery store delivery driver. <laughs> Had to ball with the ball, dude. So, Brian, what do you do when you're not working these extremely brain-using uh, uh, jobs that you have? These must be, <laughs> must be draining. You I'm know. trying to figure out what I'm going to do. That's How old that's, are you? I'm 27. But what do you like to do for fun? you have any special skills or talents or anything like uh, that? I have big calves. <laughs> you do? Let's see. Let's see what yeah. Canadian big calves look like. Let's see what's going wow. on. Wow, blow me down. Baby, oh, wow. baby got back. Oh, my goodness. How do you think you got calves like that? Uh, Genetics and I walk on my toes, I think. You walk on your toes? (laughs) Yeah, it's weird. What the fuck are you doing, dude? I don't try to. It's just how I walk. Oh, my God, bro. You ever try high high heels? Uh, No. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds like you're a cross-dresser and you wear heels all the time. Uh, There you go. There's a little act out for you. Wow, that is interesting. Is walking on your toes something that you've always done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? Are you trying to like sneak around or something? Did no, you, is, no, did you no. Have no a fa- did you have a father that beat you if you were made any noise around the house? No. Just no. been on your tippy toes your whole life? Yeah, yeah. People think their their groceries are being delivered by a ghost. <laughs> 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 My goodness. We don't hear the guy. <laughs> wow. Very interesting, Brian. So you, your special skills and talents is that you walk on your tippy toes. Therefore, due to that, you have larger than normal calf muscles. Yeah. <laughs> Do the ladies ever compliment that? Are they ever like, no, oh, Brian, my God, your calf muscles. Uh, I, man, my girlfriend does sometimes. Yeah. How long you been with your girlfriend? Uh, about two years. Wow. You throw your dick in that dyke? <laughs> <laughs> Good job, yeah. I guess so. I guess so. It's right there. It's on the surface. It's not that good. Do you think you're a glass calf full or calf empty type of guy? So uh, how long you been with her? Pardon? How long you been with this girl? Uh, two, about two years. Uh-huh. Two Where'd you meet her at? Uh, Australia. Wow. Where were you doing in Australia? Uh, working holiday visa for two years. You were what? Working holiday visa for two years. What were you doing out there? Uh, uh, working and... Partying. <laughs> I understand that you were working, Brian. What kind of uh, Most what, ki- what kind of job were you doing in Australia? Just like labor jobs, hostel jobs, uh-huh. anything oh. to make the money. Oh, you do labor job. I, I'm very familiar. So you did that, and then you fell in love with her. And now she lives with you out here? Is it a long-distance relationship? It was long-distance for nine months, yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Uh, she's she from Colombia, I met. Whoa, yeah. damn. Look at that. This chick's... Now I know how you got those caps. You're smuggling coke in them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just walk on my tippy-toes a lot. No big deal. 
Is she feisty? Do you get in a lot of fights with her? No, no, no. Now mm. Colombians are cool. They are the uh, they are the more mild mannered. More they have the uh, they are <laughs> they are the smarter. Uh, I don't think that's the word. Um, <laughs> they are the more mild mannered of the Latinos. I would say from my own research. Uh, let's check in with our senior Latino <laughs> correspondent, <laughs> Megan Markle, uh, for confirmation there. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that before. No, it is. I used to. Uh, I used to date a girl that was uh, half Colombian, half Chinese. And she uh, was, uh, well, that's why. Well, that's why. Yeah, that balanced it out pretty nice. But I know. I knew the. I knew the Colombian <laughs> side of her uh, family. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I just know these things because I'm well, worldly rounded. Yeah. She's. She's the reason I kind of have my life together right now. Oh wow! Why, what was it? What was not together with your life? I before? just didn't have a game plan. Okay, now what's your game plan now? Uh, comedy and maybe film and video production. That's a lot. That's a lot of things you just named. Um, h- how long have you been doing comedy for? Uh, I started on the 7th of January, and this oh. is my third time. Straight up. Well, seven. Here we are. Here we are, 20 days later, and yeah. uh, you're still at it. <laughs> Fucking incredible. Yeah. How did it go your first time? What was that like? It was good, but I said, um, like, the majority of the time. So, you What? I said, um, majority of the time. Oh, that's okay. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Is that how you talk in real life? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, Brian, uh, congratulations. You're 20 days into stand-up comedy. You have big calf muscles. What can I say? This is this is the beginning of something great, I do Fucking believe. Fucking A. Fucking A. How about a hand for Brian yeah, Dick, everybody? Royals. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I can't. I did. I can't even hear him walking back to his seat. It's incredible. He actually was walking on his tippy toes. My goodness gracious. From uh, all right, let's see what happens here. We're already getting a lovely young lady up here. Make some noise for Ashley Boutelier. Boutelier. <laughs> Ashley Boutelier. Garland and see home. Oh, Canada. One more time for Ashley, everybody. Hi guys, what's up? Okay, so you wanna get Canadian. I'm like the most Canadian because I'm so nice. <laughs> I was voted most nice in high school. Um, <laughs> you run into me and I'll tell you I'm sorry. <laughs> what else? <laughs> I'm sorry, no. <laughs> At my first... <laughs> At my first job, I had like this really crazy boss that was like super intimidating. And one time I knew I was too nice because he ended up telling me, stop saying I'm sorry. And I was like, okay. I was like, what am I supposed to say to that? What do I say about it? I'm sorry. (laughs) I can't help it. Anyways, crickets. (laughs) I'm sorry. I told you. There you go. That's exactly a minute right there. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you. So, wow, that was as Canadian as it gets right there. I told you right off the bat. My goodness, this is your first time doing stand-up comedy, please? Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Wow. And uh, you gave it a shot tonight. Was this your idea? Heck yeah. Oh, that's great. You're I'm your biggest fan. Is that true? Yep. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> for example, these two people, I know for a fact, I remember they've been here almost every time I've been here for the last five <laughs> years, but you're telling me you're my biggest fan? I think so. Am I right? You guys have seen me multiple, multiple times. You always sit at that table, right? Oh, just last year? Oh, well, my memory has it all different. Uh, I have different fans. They all look like you. Um <laughs> So, uh, Ashley, let's find out more stuff about you other than the fact that you're nice. What's the meanest thing you've ever done to somebody? There must be something that's once happened. You once caught a girl, you know, trying to jerk off your boyfriend or something, and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, but you're not allowed to do that. Thank you. Something like that. 
Great technique, though. Great technique. Oh. There's the Joelberg chant. It has begun. So, Ashley, what's the meanest thing you've ever done to somebody? Tell the truth here. You ever... You I ever... called my mother-in-law a whore. Whoa! Sorry. What did, she, what did she do to deserve that? Um, she's just not nice. <laughs> Come on, try to take yourself Honestly, back to the time. Honestly, that's the meanest thing I've ever done. Yeah, but why? What made you do that? There must have been a time. You called her that to her face? Mm, no. You no. didn't even tell her to her face? <laughs> you do it in your pillow? You like, called her a whore behind her back? That's the meanest thing you've ever done? I did it in my mind. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you even say it out loud? <laughs> yeah. You did. You yeah. told your, your husband this? Uh, yep. You said your mother's a whore? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, kind of. <laughs> oh my God, is that your my husband? husband. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, that, that, that's how you got here, sir. You should be happy about that. <laughs> All right. So is there something that she's done in particular that you, that you can talk about that reminds that'll convince us all of how big of a whore this guy's mother <laughs> is? It's just a defense mechanism. It's just a defense mechanism. <laughs> Ashley Boutillier, am I pronouncing that correctly? Boutillier. Boutillier. Boutillier, oh yeah, you really fucking Canada that up. Uh, (laughs) That's a real French last name, just white trash to the devil. No, it's just Boutillier, Boutillier. Boutillier. It's not written that way at all. All you guys are like, that's really not my name, how it's written. (laughs) Actually, I'm a dyke. Um, No, (laughs) I'm kidding. Last person's last name was dyke. Anyway. Ashley, so uh, you've been uh, from Calgary your whole life? Crossfield. Crossview, where's it's that at? Half an hour away, little town. Uh, north? It's awesome. Yep. You li- were raised in an igloo? Kind of. <laughs> okay, what do you do for work? I deliver mail. You deliver mail? Mm-hmm. Wow, we've had two people that deliver everything so far, <laughs> except for jokes. Uh, this is incredible. So you're a real, a real Canadian postwoman? And I think I'll keep my job delivering mail. <laughs> I'm not going to do comedy, promise. <laughs> oh, come on. No, we know that. We know that. <laughs> you must be the nicest little mail lady in the world, huh? Um, yeah, I'm so nice that one time I delivered to a really old lady on the toilet. She was taking a poop. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And wait a second. Wait. So you walked uh, into the bathroom? Yeah. When I first started my job, I was 18 years old, and I was all cute out of high school, thinking like, oh, I don't want to do anything wrong working for Canada Post, right? Like, it's a good job. So I had this registered letter, and I had to get her signature, and I went to this old folks' home where she lived, and I went upstairs, knocked on the door, Canada Post, and she's like, come in. And I was like... Okay. <laughs> oh my god. This is the most Canadian <laughs> shit I've ever heard in my life. Do you why guys don't have you, mailboxes? Wh- why are you knocking on the door yeah. in the first place? That's my job. Just wanted to let you know your mail's out here. Oh, I had to get a signature. <laughs> you old whore. <laughs> and then she's so w- overly nice. She's taking a shit. I mean, you guys are so insanely safe and trusting of one another. Who would ever invite a random person in while taking a shit? (laughs) Only in Canada. This would never happen. Let me remind you, we have done over 420 episodes of this show in the United States of America. No one's ever said anything like this before. (laughs) Neither in Australia, nor England, nor Ireland. This is truly uh, ridiculously Canadian. Got your mail here. Come on in. In the most vulnerable position one can be in. And okay. I was. <laughs> Jesus. I was more embarrassed at that moment than I was here tonight. So then, hold on. Let me ask you this. So she says, "Come on in," and then you go in, and then what? Do you oh. knock on the bathroom door? Okay. Oh, no. come, come on in. Keep coming. <laughs> I'll paint a picture. I walked in. She said, come in. So I opened the door, and I saw her little old lady recliner chair straight across. It was empty. Empty. So I'm like... Hun, hun, (laughs) hun. And there was a light shining to my left, and she's like, I'm in here. And I just was like, okay. (laughs) So I, like, walked in. 
in and I was just like, oh. And then I turned around and she was just like, it's okay, dear. She's like, I'm sorry. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and, and you're like, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, seriously, I am sorry. My so is it common to deliver the mail inside the house? Why didn't you just no, be like, hey, I got your no, mail like, and I left hey. it on the front door? I mean, I there was, was a flag sticking job. up on the bathroom door, so she <laughs> figured she could go in. Normally, we don't go inside, but this old lady, like, I was brand new. I was 18. I had just started, so I didn't want to do anything wrong, so I went in. Like, Isn't that wrong, though? <laughs> <laughs> I found out it was very, very wrong. <laughs> you found out later that it was wrong. How did you know it was a poop? You could smell it. It stunk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my <laughs> goodness gracious. So did you hand her her mail still? You gave it hand to hand? Here you go now. Back. Thank you. Back then, like this is 16 years ago. No, we so. know. We get it. You were 18. We get it. <laughs> yeah. We get that part. So it was pen and paper, which is even worse because it's not like just giving her the scanner. I had to give her the paper and then my pen. And then she's like trying to Did get Did she the make pen to you go. bend over and sign on your back? <laughs> <laughs> she could oh, have because I was go. turned around, but no. <laughs> and then anyway, so she just signed it and I was like, okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs> And she was like, oh, bills. And then she wiped her ass with it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Ashley, uh, you gave it a shot here, and it's, it's clearly not that easy. You know, no. you blanked out a little bit, but you definitely know uh, you came up with sort of a brand. I'll tell you that. And I'll give you this. Uh, in the history of this show, you won nicest in high school. I'll tell you right now, in Kill Tony history, you are definitely the nicest person that's ever been on this show. Thank you. Still the nicest. I'll take it. Ashley Boudelaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canada. Your next comedian goes by the name of Graham Templeman, everyone. Graham Templeman. Someone's very excited about this. Here he comes. Come on, everybody. One more time for Graham Templeman. How's it going, guys? So uh, I recently broke up with my, I guess, lady now. We were together for about five years and uh, didn't really have sex for the last year of our relationship. It's kind of why we broke up. But during that time, I had to figure out some interesting ways to masturbate. And uh, we would we lived together, we worked together, and she would come home immediately go walk the dog. I'm like, I'm gonna go take a shit. So I'd go sit on the toilet, faking to take a shit, and then I'd jerk off. So I have this problem. Every time I take a shit at like two or three in the afternoon, <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. I, I have to, doesn't matter where I am. <laughs> like, I, I, it's, it's actually not that bad. It's not much of a problem. That's about all I got. Fuck yeah. Absolutely. Clearly Red Band's been doing some ghost writing for the first time. Uh, wow. My goodness gracious, Graham Templeman. <laughs> Shitting and uh, jerking off at the same time. That is. We uh, all do it. I know you all do it. Uh, have you ever been taking a shit while jerking off and your mail lady gives you the mail while you're doing all that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> My goodness gracious, Graham. Well, that is exciting. I didn't realize that uh, jerking off on a toilet can get you pregnant. I've never seen anything like this before. No, this is... Clearly, you're about to be working in labor as well. <laughs> um, no, this is 15 years on the road right here. I love it. On the road doing what? Uh, playing music. Oh, wow. Interesting. What kind of music do you play? Uh... I'm a session drummer. You're a session drummer? What? Wait a second. Wait a second. G Graham, Graham, do you, are you a fan of this show? Do you know what that means? Yeah, yeah, I am. So you I understand. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is one throne Meghan Markle does not want to give up. Uh... 
So, oh, all right, just in case someone brought their girlfriend here, perhaps, who doesn't know uh, what is on at stake during this part of the show, we do, we do have a segment called A Mexican Drum Off, and we are about to have one here. Um, now, Graham, sure, get back there. Graham, just to let you know, now it's a drum solo versus a drum solo. I don't know how much you listen to the show, because we've seen this before. We've had people you know, have their friend who plays drums. They bring their friend, and they say, look, I'll help you with 60 seconds. All you have to do is fucking nothing. Just talk about, like, talk about like jerking off and shitting at the same time, and then... Then you end up doing it. But, but, but one thing that a lot of these people, like, I don't know how much you pay attention to the show because not only is it about a drum solo, it's also about comedic effect, going for it, utilizing any tricks you have up your sleeve or anything like that. Because I'll tell you right now, all time in Mexican drum offs, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez is undefeated all time. He's never been beaten before. Not in Australia, not in America, not in Europe. Uh, he's all time undefeated. However, if you win, you are the new drummer of Kill Tony. You have to be in Los Angeles this Monday for our next episode with Doug Benson and uh, uh, one a big a big top secret guest who is I will just say this a bucket list uh, guest on the Kill Tony's history. It's going to be a massive episode for us. And if you win this drum off here at the Hotel Blackfoot. Uh, <laughs> You will be the new drummer of Kill Tony. That means you also have to get ready to keep going on that road because we're going to Vancouver, Kill Tony East, La Jolla, Ventura, Boston, and Austin. So if you think, if you think you're pregnant now, you're going to be looking like you're going to have triplets by the time March comes around. But before we do this, let's check in with Prince Harry. Yes, he will also be having sex with me later tonight as my wife. <laughs> you will That's be the true. new Meghan Markle going to be Prince Harry meets Prince Scary over here. Uh, so here we go. With no further ado, this is a Mexican drum off, and this is the defender, Graham Templeman. He's underneath his leg right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. his leg. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't believe what we're seeing here. This could be one of the greatest contenders of all time. Not much comedically. However, he started underneath his leg. He ended underneath his leg. A lot of people I don't think from multiple camera angles perhaps could even tell that. He was literally playing between his legs. Uh, an unbelievable performance. You've brought the room to a climax. You've changed what the stage smells like completely. Here, come up here. Come stand up here, Graham. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Here, why don't you, why don't you just have a seat? Just have a seat right there on that stoop. Yep, perfect. There you go. Sit like a good little boy. No shitting or jerking off while you're there. All right. With no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, undefeated all time, here to defend her throne as Meghan Markle herself, the true, the undeniable drummer of Kill Tony, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. <laughs> He's got a tombstone! Oh my God! He's got a tombstone! He's got the purple deal now! He's got the regular average size dildo around his head. He's You're taking gonna have off to the hold dildo. on to this, you cuck. Oh, he just called Graham a cuck. Wow, uh, you know I've never battled a homeless before. <laughs> it's <gonna> be <laughs> He's got the unicorn style average size dildo around his head. He's wearing all the way from Hollywood. Oh, did I hear this? Oh. <laughs> 
Wow, he's playing underneath his legs. Oh! What a fucking idiot. He brought out a tombstone, ladies and gentlemen. That's the first time we've ever seen Joelberg bring out a tombstone before. He's got his foot all the way behind his head. His foot is behind his head. Oh my God, he's got his other foot behind his head. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, defending his throne, Joelberg Joel Jimenez. the finger. Oh, he's taking off the straps. Wow. Jesus. Wow. Oh, here comes the spares. His asshole's in his face. He's got a real, oh, he's putting it on him. He's putting it on him. His asshole is on Graham Templeman. Be careful with these wires. He's got it, he's got it. He's got an eye on it. He's doing actual jujitsu. This is mind boggling, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think we've, oh, wait, what's he doing? Oh, he's, he's doing jujitsu on him. This is real. We've never seen this before. <laughs> He's got him in some type of leg lock. There you go. Uh, wow. How about a hand for Joelberg Joel Jimenez? <laughs> Let's check in with Prince Harry real quick. I'm, s I'm starting to wonder whether I made the right decision marrying an American. An American legend. All right, so here we go. Everybody, I, s I have to go through this. This could be a close one. Who knows what can happen here? Uh, Joel did make quite a mockery. It was impressive that he came out guns a-blazing and did a couple of the things that Graham did with that with <laughs> almost seamlessly. However, I have to ask, how many of you have Canada's own Graham Templeman winning that? That's so bad. Wow. That's a lot. That's pretty loud. All right, here we go. How many of you have Joelberg Joel Jimenez winning? Wow. And still, your drummer of Kill Tony, Joelberg Joel Jimenez, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for the opportunity. However, I will tell you, Graham, all time in the history of the show, that could be one of the better performances and probably uh, definitely... According to the audience, we know how Canadians like their own a lot. Uh, you definitely garnered a lot more applause than anybody else ever has competing against Sweet. Joel. So congratulations. <laughs> Fun stuff. Next time we're around town, come sign up again. A, man. There you go, Graham Templeman, everybody. He's on social media at Instagram a bear. My goodness gracious, we already have a drum off out of the way. You guys having fun out there? <laughs> that was really close. I yeah. think that was the closest one. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't think I'm going to say this right because I don't know what this third letter is, but we're going to try our best. Tig short, tig shirt, TK, perhaps it's a Q, TK, short. Here we go, TK short. Teague Short, everybody. Hello, Calgary. So as a young man, I, uh, I love to suck dick. It was my own dick. But I was still a little cocksucker. Um, before all of you girls out here judge me, um, you got to know that every man in this room has tried to suck their own dick. And um, if they don't admit, they're lying. Or 
they're too fat to touch the toes. <laughs> but as I grew up, I had to uh, quit that bad habit. Because um, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror anymore. And not from the guilt, not from the shame, but from all the cum in my eyes. <laughs> now, and what's next? Do I start trying to eat my own ass? Like, that's just gross. Thank you. Big short. Hell yeah. How do you feel, buddy? Is that your first time? Yes. Wow. I'll tell you right now, that's very good for a first time. Is it Teague or Teague? How, what is it's this? It's just Ty. Ty? Get rid of the G. The 60s and were good to my T-I-G-E folks. T-I-G-E is Ty here. What the fuck is what? up with your people's names? Is that I'm, French? I'm not a dyke. I'm a dick. Uh, well, I was going to say, in short, dick. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about it, Ty. I'm just going to write Ty down. Yeah. I know, I know. Wow. So Ty, uh, first time doing stand-up. How old are you? 47. Wow. Did you think saying it like Hulk Hogan would make it cooler? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. So you're 47. You just had your first time ever doing stand-up. You are wearing a T-shirt of my favorite album of all time, Dark Side of the Moon by the great Pink Floyd. I like everything about you. Tell us more about your life. 47, what have you been doing up until this point other than sucking your own dick? <laughs> uh, just working, working and yeah, what do you do? What do you do for work? Um, I'm a plant maintenance man, and I uh, fix laundry equipment. Weather yeah. systems. So you're basically um, Homer Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And what kind of fishing are we talking about? Ice fishing? That too, but wow. fly fishing mostly. Wow. Wow. How often do you get to do that? Uh, about, you got about four months in this province. Four, four months. But how often do you go in that four months? Like once a week? Uh, three days a week. Three days a week. See, that's the shit. Like fishing's one of those things. <laughs> fishing might be the only thing that we don't have in California right. that I really wish... Like deep do. sea fishing we could do. But. Yeah, we could do that. We could catch a fucking... We'd end up catching something that looks like this dude, though. <laughs> catch a fucking body. Some Mexican cartel. Oh, shit. All right, Ty. Fun stuff, man. Very exciting. Uh, you ever catch anything crazy in a Canadian stream? You ever catch like a... Just a cold. Aha, look at that. <laughs> Aren't you a little cutie pie? <laughs> So let's talk about you sucking your own dick for a second here. <laughs> Did you really do this? A couple times. And how old, if you had to guess how old you were, what are we talking about, 15, 16? 13 probably. 13, right, flexible. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, you would actually like suck it, suck it, or you would you no, just put the tip, like, right, just oh, the tip? That's enough. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. I can only kiss the tip of it, and that's even gayer. Yeah. That's... Yeah. <laughs> You know what's funny is uh, <laughs> I'm here with my, my girlfriend for 20 years uh -huh. and my in-laws, and they've never heard the story. <laughs> <laughs> they've never what? Heard that story. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just, this is my coming out party. <laughs> my goodness, that's very <laughs> exciting. Well, uh, you might be single now. That's great. No, I'm just kidding. She loves you. She, she just sucks the tip of your dick, too, doesn't she? <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you would do that. Did you ever really come on your own face? Actually, no. I was too young. I was just shooting blanks. Right. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Hey, late, shooting late blanks. Bloomer. Late bloomer. A late bloomer. Wow. So you just have a high-pitched voice. You're sucking on the tip of your dick. <laughs> I guess. My goodness. That is a late bloomer. That's interesting. When was the last time you actually succeeded in sucking your own dick? Probably 13 or 14. Yeah. I don't think he had a long career at no, it. No, no, it was kind of shameful. I was right. like... Oh, they, don't, they don't have your no. number and last name retired somewhere in a... Uh, 30 years ago. It's a different time. Right. <laughs> now everybody can suck their own exactly. dick like it's nothing. <laughs> right. Now, now they have Instagram filters for that. <laughs> wow. So, Ty, where'd you meet your girlfriend at, or your wife at? How long have you been married for? Not married, just... Oh, you, you said in-laws. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. They're in-laws, but we're not married, but we don't uh -huh. know. Oh, we just call them in-laws here in Canada. 
<laughs> just make shit up whenever. Right, right. So uh, you've been with her for how long? 20 years. 20 years. Oh, yeah, the f- they're in laws. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Um, what, wow. 20 years. Reason? So that's almost fresh off of you sucking your own cock. Actually, I knew her at the time. Uh huh. My goodness. You guys went to school together? Yeah, junior high. Wow. Yeah. And is that when, when did you guys first uh, kiss? Like right around then, a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More, more than 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly. And you've yeah. never been with anyone else. Well, yeah, but we weren't together the whole time. We met, dated, and then oh. went away for 10 years and got back together. Let's check in with Prince Harry. Did you quit sucking your dick cold turkey or? Yeah, yes, yes, okay. yes, yeah. yes. I think they have a patch for that if you struggle with it. Uh, Dickatine or something like that. Dickorette. So Ty, uh, what oh, other than fishing and uh, whatnot? What any other any other fun facts about you or your life or Not your really family f- or? No fun facts. Just I like to listen to music. Yep. Um, you smoke pot. You excited? The pot's now legal here in actually, Canada. Once it became legal, I stopped smoking it because it just wasn't as fun anymore. Wow! My goodness. Hey, do I need what are you doing now? Heroin? Are you? No. <laughs> no. no. That's fun. Was that, was that your wife uh, over there? Probably, yeah. seems like everybody like here in Canada, probably. the people, it seems like if you know the person that got pulled out of the bucket, these people here in Canada think you're allowed to yell out whatever yeah. you want if you're friends on stage. Is, is that why you're not marrying her? She won't shut the fuck up? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my mic's fixed. Yeah, you need, to, you need to shove the tip of your dick back in her mouth. You know what I'm saying? Keep that mouth full. Yeah, there you go. You still got it, Ty. All right, well, man, I'll tell you this. Congratulations. It's not just that you told a silly, you know, dorky, suck my your own dick thing. You know, the, the material itself was sort of want wah to me, but, but you delivered it like a fucking champion. I was really... I wasn't even, I wasn't even going to guess that this was your first time ever doing it until you, as soon as the 60 seconds was up, you looked at me like that. Uh, you just accomplished something insane because you did. It was a great first time. You should be very proud of yourself. Getting up here is the scariest thing I've ever done. Like I don't get in front of people. That's my biggest fear. Well, you should try drum battling homeless people. <laughs> I'm glad that you. I'm, gl- I'm glad that you faced your fears here tonight and a great performance. Perhaps even the set of the night so far. How about a hand for Ty Short, everybody? hand for the band guys right unbelievable. unbelievable okay i've pulled yet another name out of the bucket of destiny and the name that i pulled is sam walker sam walker hey put a gun against his head pull that trigger now he's dead come on guys sam walker everybody Excited to be here. This is a good-looking crowd. I haven't seen this many good-looking people in one place since the judge called all the witnesses at my indecent exposure trial. Don't worry, I got off. Little bit about me. I like to walk the streets at night and pleasantly surprise people by not attacking them. Let's talk about my sex life here for a minute. There are two very distinct traits that I look for in a lover. Weak and vulnerable. Wow. Sam Walker, ladies and gentlemen. Ty Shore, you can forget about that set of the night thing so far that I told you uh, 
two minutes ago. Wow, Scott Sam Walker, very impressive. What a funny fucking character you are, sir. How long you been doing stand up? Be five years in March. Damn right, it shows, my man. Let's check in with. Uh, we're gonna check in with Prince Harry. It's nice to finally know that OJ did not actually murder that woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. The, only Sam. one glove. So let's talk about it. With the, the, your character seems very much like uh, who you are. Uh, how close are the two? It's just the volume turned up to 100. <laughs> but it's, a, it's a like 89 right now, though. <laughs> it, <doesn't say. laughs> it can go higher. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, don't give me that look. I am both weak and vulnerable right now. I really hope we find out this is Sasha Baron Cohen doing it. <laughs> My goodness. You have a real fanny pack there, Sam. What's inside of it? Condoms and Vicodin. <laughs> Wow. I'm going to need one of each. <laughs> My goodness gracious. So Sam, five years all here in Calgary? Yeah, I started here in Calgary, but I started touring the world. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get to tour the world? You just took yourself? No, I got to open for motherfucking Jason Rouse. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Jason Rouse, a legend. Absolutely. Good friend of mine. And uh, you went around the world with him. That's very cool, right? Yeah. Where'd you guys get to go? Anywhere special? Sweden. They almost didn't let me into Sweden. Oh, my goodness. Is that your, is that your agent over there? Who's that guy? That's my number one supporter, Marty. His wife built this for you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Those are the nice people over at Rebel State Designs. I'm going to check back in with Prince Harry. Yes, uh, question for you. How do you look like a Boy Scout at the bottom, Freddy Krueger in the middle, and Theo Vaughn at the top? <laughs> it's very good. That is a great question. How do you do that? Getting roasted by beans over here, the musical fruit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. My goodness, Scott. So you live here in Calgary? Yeah, born and raised. Very cool. What else? What else should we know about you? Anything else interesting about Sam Walker that this sold out capacity audience here in your hometown should know? I used to be married. Yeah. To a woman. <laughs> What happened there? Where is her body? <laughs> it's obviously not in your hair. <laughs> no one talks to my man like that. Wow. You come at Beans, you come at the royal couple. <laughs> my goodness. It's a revolutionary war happening up here right now. Fair's fair. <laughs> Very good. You in town tomorrow night? You goddamn right I am. How about you, uh, how about you come here? I have two stand-up shows. You want to open up for me? Daddy, I'd love to. There you go. How about that? Well, then we'll see you tomorrow, 7 and 10 p.m. here at the Laugh Shop, Calgary, Canada. There goes Sam Walker, Sam Walker Live. Yes. Nice. <laughs> that was awesome. There you go. Tomorrow night, that guy will have a new biggest credit. <laughs> Pulled another name out of the bucket, make some noise for your next comedian. Clearly anything can happen. His name is Tim Anderson. Tim Anderson. Here we go, from far back in the room. Oh wait, no. Stunt double. Maybe, here he is. Tim Anderson, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. 
Everybody, come on, one time, make some noise for Tim Anderson. I gotta tell you about my ex-girlfriend, she had crazy eye. Left eye was normal, right eye, more like a divining rod. Making love to her was great. It was the only time I didn't have to think about where to look. When she orgasmed, the eye would straighten out and we could lock eyes, all four of them. She was amazing at texting and driving. Not so good at directions though, she'd point left just take the next three rights. It's amazing. <laughs> she didn't mind that people made funny faces behind her back because she fucking started it. <laughs> he liked that one. That was good. Her kryptonite was the House of Mirrors. <laughs> sure, hold on. Was the house of what? Her kryptonite was the house of mirrors. Uh huh. Turned out to be the perfect pl breakup spot. I got her lost inside and I fucked up and yelled, I'm breaking up with you. I just left her there. I know dick move, but I just couldn't fucking look her in the eye. Eyes. Eyes. There you go, there you go. Tim Anderson, everybody. You were finished. You were finished when the cat meowed. You just didn't know it. I like your style, Tim. You're well put together, yet somehow out of this crazy crew, you're the creepiest guy that's been up here all night. I get that a lot. Somehow. I mean, the last guy was clearly doing a little bit of an exaggerated character, but you look like you have literal skeletons in your closet. What's the name Why of the I high school you hang out in front of? What? Why I have a shotgun. Never mind. You do have a shotgun? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. How many do you have? Only two. Only two, just in case fucking two male ladies ever come into your house at the same time. She seems so nice, though. Right, no, I'm kidding. Uh, so what do you shoot? What do you tend to shoot? Uh, just targets. I just practice because I keep missing my ex-wife. Oh, wow. You, are you really missing your ex-wife? Uh, yeah, I tried a couple times. How long were you married for? Uh, which time? Uh, both times. Uh, about nine years. Each? Yes. And uh, how do these things usually end? <laughs> <laughs> and, is, and by the way, uh, follow-up question, is this why you have two shotguns? I can't use the other one again, that's all. Right. <laughs> Good to bury one in the snow somewhere. Fingerprints. The so let's talk about it. How do these usually end? Uh, never good. Sure. A lot of lawyers. And, uh huh. Uh, but what makes it, well, how does it usually, okay, so what's happening in year eight of re these relationships? You still fucking? What's going on, Tim? <laughs> Be honest here. Just let it out. It's going to make you feel better afterwards. Uh, number one? Yeah. That, it was just really bad choice in life. Number two was also really bad choice in life. Uh -huh. I just didn't realize that the medication would actually wear off. Their medication. Yes, theirs. Oh, right. They got tolerance to it. What kind of medicine did you have them on? Uh, <laughs> Chloroform? I did not use Vicodin. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, lithium. Lithium. So they were, on a, uh, bi they were a little bit bipolar. Uh, yeah. Right. So, uh, but this is what you fell in love with originally, right? You guys, at the beginning of these relationships, you guys are drinking, you're having fun, things like that, right? Am I close to uh, right about no, this? No, met her on medication. She was good on medication. I'm talking about, I just asked medication. you a specific question. Yeah. In the beginning of the relationships, you guys are having fun times, yes. partying, drinking, right? Always fun. Not, not right. So and then it starts to fade a little bit, and then they get on the medicine, right? I think you're telling me about you. No, I'm telling you about you, and it's bothering the <laughs> fuck out of you right now. It's great. But yes, I know all of these things from life experience. You are correct. However, this is about your oh, life. Sorry, you okay. seem a little bit shy up here talking about it. Uh, yeah. So it's this personal. most recent one, when did this divorce happen? About nine years ago. <laughs> Everything happens in nines know, with you. It's, it's nine, nine, strange. nine. My goodness gracious. All right, Tim. So what do you do for work? You're uh, a private I also investigator. Work for a laundry company, but I manage people. <laughs> what? Tim, take I also a work for a laundry company. You work getting for a blood out of company. stuff or what? <laughs> and uh, I manage people. So what I do you What do you do with laundry? Uh, I just really boss people around. That's all I do. What do you, What do you mean? <laughs> 
I'm the boss and I tell the guys what to do. That's basically, I help them. I hold a lot of hands. Those guys, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to do laundry. <laughs> Sounds easy, but it seems You so ever hard. think about hiring women for this job? <laughs> I always get divorced. I can't help it. <laughs> I mean, if I was going to start a dishwashing company, I wouldn't have a bunch of fucking dudes working it. You know what I mean? It's always a dude in the kitchen, though. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I know. I'm kidding. They, they, they work harder. Um, just a basic fact. Women with their old dick, they come in with a r r brace on their wrist two weeks into the job. I'm going to need workers comp for this. I need, and I want equal pay. <laughs> anyway, uh, just kidding, ladies. That's a joke. I love you. I love you so much that I know how insane the relationships that this guy has been through are. Uh, so, uh, Tim... Um, you've worked in laundry for how long now? Uh, seven years. Wow, that's a full load. Um, oh, God. <laughs> so stupid. Laundry jokes. I don't ever get to do them. Uh, <laughs> they're so boring. And, and before that, did you enjoy doing IT work for bowling leagues? Or? Uh, there you go. I got big balls, that's all. Do you ever think about writing any jokes about what you do in the laundry business? Because uh, if you do any of those, I may tag one or two of them. <laughs> <laughs> may tag. That's a real wow, may tag that one laundry coming. joke, ladies and gentlemen. Some of these jokes are drier than others. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bravo. I almost passed out trying to think of more laundry jokes just then. <laughs> Wow. So, uh, but no, you never thought about uh, performing uh, no, that? Uh, not, not yet. Right. I think you should. I think you should talk about what you know. You know what I mean? Well, I can always talk and about And look, divorce. I mean, look at this crowd. No one knows more about whites than you do, right? <laughs> it's very, perhaps you could go to Vancouver and perform in front of some <laughs> colored loads. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> so stupid. Uh, Vegas, uh, wow. I didn't, I didn't realize the, that, uh, yeah. who, who is that, the Migos? Baking no, soda? No. Who is that? Who says uh, baking soda? Uh, it's D don't ask me. <laughs> it's just mumbling. It's the Migos? OC Genesis. Huh? OT Genesis. Genesis. Wow, I, I didn't realize he's yelling through a tin can on this episode. Can you hit that again? Whip it through the <laughs> Wow. The sound here at the Hotel Blackfoot is, uh... <laughs> anyway, Tim, anything else crazy that we should know about you? Any fun facts about you or your life? Anything that you've ever accomplished or done? Any uh, special skills or talents? Uh, any crazy story about your family that you think makes you different than anybody that's ever been on the show before? Uh, it doesn't make me any different, but, you know, families are the worst. Mm -hmm. That's why I live in Calgary. They live in Vancouver. It's very safe distance. Wow. How long did you hang out with them? Till you were nine? <laughs> Why do you not like your family? What's the first thing that pops in your head when I ask that question? Because uh, we're related and they right. are terrible people. Why, why, what makes them so terrible? Can you give us one example? Because I'm the youngest and I have to do everything. That's you have problem. to do everything? Every, no matter what it was. I like mean. what? Other well, than the laundry. We know you're doing the laundry, but <laughs> what else? It's definitely doing the laundry. Right. But I have three sisters, and they're all older, so they just treated me like... And they just hung you out to dry, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Tony. Come on. You're Come good, on, like guys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what are the older sisters like? They've never done anything nice for you? I mean, yes, they were. I was a spoiled, rotten, stupid little kid till I was nine. Oh. And then, <laughs> but then they just, I don't know, they just weren't very nice to me. After, then, then, after. then the tides changed. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the laughs were set to low on that one. <laughs> it's better than the color load. Nah, it doesn't work when you do it. <laughs> Maybe that's why but hey, you know what, Tim? This is what it's all about. It's about giving it a shot, getting out of your comfort zone, doing some. This was your first time ever doing stand up, right? Uh, third time. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, well. Sorry. 
No, I'm kidding. That's uh, it's fun times, Tim. Like I said, talk about what you know. You know what I mean? To give us some real substance. What the fuck did you talk about? Nothing. I wrote down nothing. Crazy ad girl. Yeah, you know what I mean. Get out there and be you, Tim. You're a special guy. Talk about what you look like or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? You look like Just a, a creepy look guy. like a goddamn Canadian newscaster or something like that. Whatever that means. I'm not exactly sure. We have a guy where we're from called Fritz Coleman uh, that nobody here would know, but it would kill at the comedy store in L.A. if I called you Fritz Coleman. <laughs> But not here. <laughs> oh, we got that bingo card from last uh, Yeah, Monday. <laughs> it's the Pauly Shore bingo card. Fritz Coleman has been called for references that, there's <laughs> that nobody knows. <laughs> That's funny. All right, Tim. But, but like I said, you know what I mean? If, if it brings you any joy at all, then get out and do it more often than you're doing it now. And then come back again and show us all how much you can improve. Tim Anderson, right. everybody. There we go. Hey, Tony. There goes Tim Anderson. You know, uh, the guy that was on yeah. the guy that was on before yeah. him, I asked Jason Rouse, uh -huh. any fun facts about him? And yeah. he goes, oh, yeah, his dad was a cop, but found out later in his life that he was just a stripper at a gay bar. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Is that true? Is that true, Sam? Uh, Sam uh, just killed himself oh, finding wow. out that information. He's no longer with us. Oh, uh, this looks like a fun name. Let's see what's going to happen here. Make some noise for Lahan Olawale. Lahan, Lahan Olawale. Yeah. Make some noise for Lahan Olawale. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I recently surveyed uh, 100 women with the question, do you pee in the, uh, when you take a shower? And 100 of them said, what are you doing in my shower? <laughs> <laughs> and then peed. So I'm African, uh, West African actually, and uh, I have a lot of white friends. And all my white friends ask me, uh, hey, Lahan, how do you tell the difference between uh, uh, Africans and <coughs> and I tell them just count the flies <laughs> I can I can make that joke all right I can make that joke. All, right, all right I have one last one so this is a dark one unlike my last joke uh, so Jeffrey Epstein killed himself right All right, all right, all right. So, the, do it, do it, do it. There was a report that came out and said that Epstein tried to kill himself originally, um, but uh, sort of quit. And then he gave, <laughs> he gained a lot of weight, fell into depression, and tried again and succeeded. Right? My joke, it's a dark one. Do you think. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Lahan. Stop, 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 stop. I gotta fucking know the joke. I don't know what all that extra setup's for. I have no idea what you're thinking. You just did 35 second long setup and then you said, now back to the joke. There's no way you needed that, but go ahead, just do the joke. And then I'll see, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it needed it. But go ahead, please, just do the joke. So your dark joke is, Jeffrey Epstein. Do you, do you ever wonder if fat people choke out faster? I guess I'm so. Sorry. All right. I'm, Lahan I'm sorry. That was so uh, nice. Sorry. Lahan, absolutely. You were killing throughout that entire okay. set. Oh, and, then, okay. and then you decided to squeeze in that wackadoodle joke at the end. Uh, so let's talk. I was not expecting to see someone that looks like you up here tonight. Really? Uh, yeah, no. I didn't realize that here in Canada they still make you guys sit in the back or something like that. <laughs> It's true, he wasn't up here. I don't see anybody black up here. So let's talk about it. Lahan or Lahan? Um, it's Lahan. Lahan. And what kind of West African are you? Exactly? Nigerian. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, interesting. And what yeah. brings you here to Canada? Uh, came for school originally, but graduated. Camper Canada. school? No, came for school. Came for school. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what, what kind of school did you go to? Uh, Camper school? I don't know. I don't know. 
that we don't have for those of you wondering like what happens sometimes if you're listening to the podcast sometimes there's a thing called a monitor on a stage which is a speaker which points back at us so we can clearly hear what's happening <laughs> other than that normally the speakers are facing another direction of the audience so sometimes it's we don't get to hear if people say all the same words quickly we we can't hear up here ha 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 yeah ha 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 a couple fucking a couple fucking youtube fans in the audience here uh Ha 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 ha, he, he explained something. Ha 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 ha. What a loser. Ha ha ha. Anyway, so Lahan, uh, you are Nigerian. You're in yep, Canada. Yep. And what did you come for to school here to study? Engineering. Engineering? Heck yeah. yeah. What are you engineering? Uh, chemicals. Oh, chemicals. wow. Yeah. Wow, what kind of chemicals? Oil, mostly. Oil? Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. What are yeah. we talking about? Are we talking about cocoa butter or something like that? Or, uh... Oh, my. The best one. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You ever perform here before? You have a black foot. <laughs> what is that noise? What are these groans I keep hearing? These groans of you people. You're not in Canada anymore, all right? If we're here for this night only, this is America. <laughs> You're all Americans for a night, and we don't fucking groan just because a joke's good and edgy. <laughs> you either laugh or you don't laugh. He has a black foot. We're at the black foot. That's a laugh. I respect it. It was a good one. You didn't mind my edgy laundry jokes earlier. <laughs> Yeah, we were just having loads of laughs back then. That one made them fold. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys are pressing me. All right. So, Lahan, uh, how's Lahan. engineering going? Good? Uh, how long have you lived here in Canada? I'd say about six years. About six years. Yeah. And you learned, uh, you came straight from Nigeria? Yeah. You learned English there? Well, yeah. Yep. Official English. You speak it incredibly well. You speak English better than most of the Canadians that have been <laughs> up here tonight. It's mind blowing. Uh, so, uh, what, what have you been doing for fun? I mean, this must be in a, an incredibly abrupt change from Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. This is the opposite of Nigeria. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, in some ways, yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. us how it's most different. Um, first, oh, ah, actually. First time I got here, I got off the plane and uh, it's cold. That's the first thing. Wait, what? What's it's that cold. mean? It was cold. It means no worries. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Classic. Yeah. I'll take it. Classic yeah. indeed. Shit. So uh, it was cold. Doesn't get that cold in Nigeria. Yep. What else? Um, and at the airport. Uh, what really freaked me out was someone opened the door for me. Oh, someone opened the door like, for you. Was it the male lady from earlier? <laughs> <laughs> Have you never seen a door before? No. Like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, Nigeria, they just have openings. <laughs> just right? Sorry? Nothing. Right. They just really? have mosquito nets where he's from. You actually do. You do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Yes. I know. I know. Uh, so, in what ways is it the same? Let me ask you that. In which ways is Calgary like uh, Nigeria? Just so that, just so that all the racists in the room can really hate it, hate themselves for a little bit. There's no way we're the same as them. We got better blood running through our veins. That's my impression of you guys, not me, by the way. Let me remind you, that's me as a Calgary manly man. Um, so I find that, like, once you get the language right, once you know how to communica communicate to people, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. People just treat you the same way. Yep. Good people. All right. So let's talk about it. Here's my next question. You sure. know I'm going there. How many little innocent white Canadian pussies have you destroyed? <laughs> my goodness. Oh, my God. Oh, my, you just looked right up into the lights. Oh, no, you were looking at the clock. You're like, how long do we, how much longer can this episode be? <laughs> my goodness, let's face it. You are the Lexington Steel of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, okay. I'll take it. <laughs> um, 
I mean, because let's let's just be honest here. I mean, it's it can't be easy even trying to find a black woman in these parts. Am I right? I mean, there can't be there can't be a ton of them. We all huddle together, so. Oh, you are. It's yeah. pretty easy to find them in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. My goodness. When you say you guys are all huddled up together, what are we talking about? You live near a uh, forest lawn or something like that? Or, uh... <laughs> he means a literal huddle at the football games. They play uh, <laughs> sports together. All right. They don't play. F- they, don't get, they don't get football jokes here, Joel. Uh... This is a, oh yeah no it, even though they're Americans for the night it's not gonna work it's hockey or nothing at all so uh, what are we talking about here what's the ratio uh, white women to black women that you've had in the last six years since you've come to Canada just be honest just be honest none of these people are gonna hurt you it's like ten to one ten to one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of a normal white guy being like oh shit <laughs> yeah dude. That's why all these women stopped fucking their uh, boyfriends and husbands here. Lahan moved into town. That's right. Why would they? Why would they fuck their nerdy laundry doing husbands when they can fuck you? Let's check in with Prince Harry. Can I just say Lahonda forever? <laughs> Wow. I like that. I like that. My goodness. My goodness. So have you been in a relationship with any of these girls? Uh, shortly. Yeah, yeah. shortly. <laughs> About 30 minutes in the bedroom, that's it. <laughs> My goodness. Have you ever, uh, have you noticed that uh, you've hurt some of them? Have they ever been like, oh, go slower, like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, okay. And it's so the answer is yes. Without a doubt. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Do you go slower or do you teach them a fucking lesson? <laughs> you have any, any special tricks when you're poutine it in them? Oh, come on, Joel. Joel. Get over. There is one thing, and trust me, I've tried. There is one thing these people will not let you joke about, and it's poutine and the way they say, uh, what is it? Sorry? Sorry? Yeah, whatever that is, yeah. That's the first Booberg chant I've ever heard. Yeah, (laughs) Booberg. I don't give a fuck. Whoa. All right. So uh, you you have plans to go back home anytime? Um, Yeah, yeah. It, Uh it costs a lot of money. It does? Yeah. Uh, Wakanda, Wakanda price are we talking about? Wakanda price? <laughs> In the you don't even have to answer. Case. I did the joke. Oh, it was I'll, just yeah. for the joke. I said Wakanda price are we talking about? Anyway. Lahan, so much fun, man. Anything else we should know about you before we let you go? Any fun facts about you? Uh, this was my first time on stage. Get and the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Really? Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I I almost didn't sign up. Wow. I literally was not going to. And when you called my name, I literally was not going to come up. But I oh just... Oh, my God. Fuck it. Wow. Hell yeah. Great job. <laughs> Magical. Fuck and that's it. why the Bucket of Destiny is called the Bucket of Destiny, because of moments and uh, cool things like this. Lahan, you are an incredibly great spirit and very, very, very naturally funny. Uh, congratulations take, to hell you. Yeah. Come Fuck back. Yeah. Uh, Tony Hitch. Oh. Hell yeah. Come back again. Anytime. Lahan Olawale, everybody. There he goes. Wow. And he just disappeared. Yeah, he's gone. Oh, the dancing queen. Interesting. Hell yeah. How about one more time for Lahan Olawale, everybody? So cool. I love that. Okay, your next comedian goes by the name of Austin Van DeCamp. Austin 
Vandekamp. Austin Vandekamp. Austin Vandekamp. Here he comes. One more time, Calgary, for Austin Vandekamp. Hey, hey, guys. How are you? Good, good. Nice to hear. I, uh, I, was, I was writing at the pub the other night, just writing some jokes, and this guy at the bar was like, hey, man, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm just, just kind of writing and stuff. And he's like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm a stand-up comedian. He goes, oh, funny guy, huh? Like, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. And he's like, oh, you don't seem that excited about it. I was like, I don't know. I'm just not, not really into it right now. I'm kind of tired about it. I'm kind of sad. And he goes, oh, fuck. Well, why don't you just become a firefighter? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? That's some pretty good advice, man. God damn, you're right, I should just give it all up. What the fuck am I doing? Why am I here? Right then and there. And then he goes, you know why you should be a firefighter? And I was like, I don't really know. No, why? And he goes, because if you're a firefighter, you can fuck anything that moves. Boy or girl, it's all in house. Like, I don't. <laughs> like, like I said, guys, I couldn't help but think this is some of the best advice I've ever gotten in my goddamn life, all right? This is my last set tonight. This is my last set. Uh, I got a friend who just, um... Austin Vandekamp, there you go. Welcome, buddy, welcome. Hey, hey. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy for? Uh, I've been doing it for like two and a half years. Two and a half years, how old are you? I am 24. Ah, yes, Yes, very cool, very cool. Started here in Calgary? Yeah, yeah, I moved from uh, small city Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Oh yeah, Saskatoon. The birthplace yeah. of uh, one of my happens. favorite that mentors and friends, happens. the great Rowdy Roddy Piper. Did you know that he was born there? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A legend. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. One of my favorite human beings of all time, the yeah. late, great WWE Hall of Famer, Rowdy Roddy Piper. He taught me to keep the whites of my eyes white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. Really? Is he's the one that taught you that? Yeah. He does the visine thing probably every half clear hour. Eyes, clear, clear eyes. Clear eyes. Does that not like, clear affect eyes, you more, though? Like, doesn't that start to fuck up your eyes more yeah, and more? That's what I right? That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah, well, look at you guys with your fucking red eyes. Yeah, tell but me like, it's like... Oh, tell I have red eyes. People are like, are you high? I'm like, no. You know, it's good. You do look high. You don't smoke pot? I do smoke pot, oh, yeah. Okay, do, yeah. Definitely. So you are high. I am... I was high earlier today, yeah, yeah. but not anymore. It yeah. weared off. I look that. I think so. I don't know. Okay, cool stuff, Austin. So what do you do for work? Uh, I do stand-up, and then I work at the bank part-time. What do you do at the bank? Uh, I was an account manager, and now I'm just back to a bank teller. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Steal what happened? What happened? I don't know if I could talk about it. What? <laughs> no, nothing happened. I just wanted to do more comedy. And so I just was going to quit, and then they were like, well, can you do this instead? Very cool. Very exciting. Yeah, okay. very fun. Very fun. Yeah. And comedy's going good for you? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's... Uh- what do you mean? Are you are you getting gigs? Are you doing good at open mics? Do you feel good about it? I feel good about it. I, I do my own show um, and stuff like that. Oh, by the way, the word I was thinking of that you're not allowed to make fun of them about is the word a boot. I remembered it during his set because you, I could tell that he literally had to try to say it properly. Yeah. I noticed. You're like, at one point, you're just speaking normally, and then this one guy's talking about... <laughs> like It's like I could tell you really had to, like, fucking... You, you had to... Yeah. You guys have to remind yourselves to speak like fucking Americans sometimes. Yeah, and it's totally. one of because of South Park? Things. Is that the reason? No, the, it was the, it's a chicken and the egg thing. Uh, South Park came after because they just do that here. It's very bizarre. Yeah, I totally. was trying to think of the word. I thought it was sorry, but it's not. It's a boot. No, it is sorry. Sorry is a big one, too. Though. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. poutine and a boot are the two things. Canadians will be like, fuck you! I think it's Putin, though. It. I think they call it, like, Putin now. I think that's, like, the official... It doesn't, it doesn't matter to us. We're, we always, we're leaving on Sunday. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're in Vancouver for one night at the end of February. Uh, it's Putin to us. Uh, Prince Harry. Has anyone ever told you you look like one of the, the kids from Home Improvement grown up? <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Who? We just got that show. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Or Sean from Boy Meets World. You ever got that? You guys don't have that out here. Fuck. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what they're saying. But to yeah. me, you look like you take six naps a day. That's what I would say. That's the joke. I, if I were going to make a joke about you, that's the joke I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 100%. You always look like you just woke up from a nap in your car. You he, nap in your car a lot? 
I do, yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much. Let's he, check in with Prince Harry. Yeah, he looks like Donnie Darko if he was a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's good. I agree with that. You, you look like you have hat hair, but have never owned or worn a hat. <laughs> what do your parents do for work? Uh, my dad's a manager at a grocery store, and then my mom uh, just became a doctor a few years ago. Wow, your mom just became a doctor. Yeah. Well, How did, what kind of doctor? Uh, she kind of does, uh, she, she's like a, f- a general physician. I don't know. So she does like emerge, family, all that. Like, uh, she's I in it for the it. pills. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't get any of, the, of it, though. So it's kind of, yeah. Huh. What do, what do you like to do for fun? Any hobbies other than comedy? Uh, yeah, I skateboard. Uh, surprise. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like skateboard. I like to write do that, hang out with friends. It's pretty much it, man. Like, Why'd you say surprise like that after the skateboarding I, I, thing? I, I, you think you look like a skateboarder? I look like a, a, a failed skateboarder, yeah. Like someone who's like, I was trying to go pro. And out I here, is it in. called snowboarding? <laughs> they do that. have that. We're checking in with Prince Harry. I hate to tell you this. You don't look like a skateboarder, but you do look like you got sponsored for being homeschooled. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I agree. You do look like you got a sponsorship for being homeschooled. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who is your sponsor? Is it Infinite CBD? It, it might have been, yeah. I think All it was right. Infinite because it's really good for anxiety and depression. Absolutely. And, uh, and they can go to infinitecbd.com, yeah. use the code Tony15, and yeah, save uh, totally. 15% yeah, right now. Yeah, I broke now. my shin the other day, and I just put... Yep. Shit on there. Yep. And now it's no longer broken. It's no longer it also broken. it also makes you have it also makes you have huge calf muscles. <laughs> You, uh, you said your dad manages a grocery store? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they hiring delivery drivers? They. <laughs> what they kind are. of grocery store? What's the name of the grocery store? Uh, Superstore. Superstore? Wait. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Superstore. Isn't that a TV show? <laughs> it is a TV show, yeah, yeah, but they started first. That's what they, they called the real the Canadian. fuck out of it. Right. Yeah, yeah, they should. Yeah, yeah they should no, go they, for totally, it. they totally should. That's a great idea. So, uh,. Anything else interesting we should know about you before we let you go, you little Harry Potter after LASIK eye surgery? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm definitely, I'm a Harry Potter if I, like, I'm the Harry Potter, but I do your taxes, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I give up magic. Right. But yeah, no, nothing exciting, no, <laughs> no. Huh. How about your, you have a girlfriend? I do, yeah, yeah. Yeah? How long have yeah. you been with her? I've been her, with her for three years now. <laughs> yeah. Three years, yeah. yeah. What's, the, what's, the, what's the thing you like the most about her? Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I like that she's not from here. That's about it. All right, all right, all right. Give it, no, give us an answer. Give, give us an answer. What's the thing you like the most about her? I, I okay, like okay. that she's just like cool and likes that I'm doing comedy and doesn't think I'm a bum. That's about it. I would wow. say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's cool like that. Yeah. She's also Spanish, so she's really sexy. But that's, oh, that's like, really? That's Is extra. that true? Yes. She that's here? For you. That was for Who's you. Yeah. The one with the know. glasses? I think here? that was a guy. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> He's also Wait, Spanish. You're gay? It was dude with the beard. No, stop, stop, stop. I think it was. <laughs> Does she look like Joelberg? <laughs> He's Spanish and Don't sexy. <laughs> yeah, relax. All right, uh, yeah. Austin. Uh, my goodness, a lot of fun, dude. Congratulations, you started young. You look at all these people that have been coming up here tonight. They're older, yeah. they're trying to get in the game now, and you, you you're already doing it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. There he goes. Austin Vandekamp, everybody. Absolutely. There he goes. There he goes. Hairless Potter, everybody. Hairless Potter. Reaching deep in the bottom of the bucket. Get these. Did you see him fist bump me while I was playing? (laughs) Did it work? Did you do it? Almost chipped my damn tooth. Like I'm playing the saxophone, I'll fist bump you later. <laughs> okay, pulled another name out of the bucket. This looks like a fun one. Let's see what happens here. Make some noise for Sam Benty. Sam Benty, another Canadian coming to the stage here on Kill Tony. Wow, he's running. Sam Benty. Here he comes. Ah! Sam Benty. 
trying not to smoke as much weed recently? So I've been eating a lot of weed recently? I eat so much weed that my farts smell like Amsterdam. Like a little like pot, a little like a sex show, but also like wooden shoes and cheese for some reason. Nah. I've still been uh, smoking a lot of pot. And, and that's because I got given a, a real crystal bong for Christmas. And I know it's real crystal because I do the wine glass test where it goes around the rim and it's like, but, but it's a real crystal bong, so it goes, ding, 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 ding. Don't worry, ding, ding. It's real crystal. Yeah. It, if you do that test and it plays Amy Winehouse, you got yourself a crack pipe. You got to throw that out. Thanks, Zach. Wow. Sam Benty. That was great, dude. Congratulations. Look at that. Real performer. Came up and performed, enunciated, projected, wrote properly. Yeah, I got a drama degree, so I better use it. Hell yeah. Sometimes. Absolutely. Why would yeah. you study all that drama if you're not going to use it for something? No. Uh, so, Sam, uh, welcome, welcome. How long have you been doing stand up? Uh, like, like seven years. Very cool. Hell yeah. You're from here in Calgary? Yeah, m- m- most of it here in Calgary. I love it. Yeah. This is one of my favorite things about the show. Alongside yeah. people doing it for their first times, doing good or bad, being surprised that uh, that they even got pulled out of a bucket. There's actual comedy veterans, solid comedians signing up for the oh. show tonight. That's so yeah. fucking cool. So seven years. Any crazy accomplishments in the seven years? Anything you're oh, proud of? Man, I- I've seen Sam Walker up here before. <laughs> I... I-, I- I got to do a few shows with him here in Alberta once. And man, I got to tell you, one time, like, we're, we're, we're driving to a show, and this other comic named Spencer uh, wet willied him. Oh, what happened? Oh, man. We, we, we were passing by Dead Man's Flats. Like, that's what it's called. And he's like, yeah, we got to pull over behind the SO. What's an SO? It yeah, it's a gas station. Oh, okay. Like a, okay. Like a Wawa? I don't know what yeah. they got in the States. Sure, yeah, no, no. It's, a, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's We have Saudi Arabian fuel husky. in the States. Uh, but but he pull, we go behind this gas station, and then he, he's like, Yeah, Spencer, can I have a word with you outside the car? And he walks like uh, like three meters, like 15 feet. And. and, and <laughs> talking to this guy and, he, and and he's like shouting at him and then all of a sudden they're hugging and then they come back to the car and there's still like another half an hour till we get to the gig and then we get there and we talk to Spencer he's like what 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 did Sam say to you and he's like dude he was like uh, if you ever put a finger in me again you better buy me dinner first wow. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's so cool it's all, yeah, it's and you would consider that one of your major life accomplishments <laughs> In, in comedy in Canada, yeah. <laughs> I love good. it. So seven years in the game, what do you do when you're not doing stand-up? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a kitchen manager at a pizza restaurant. Fuck yeah. yeah hey, that good. sounds good enough. As what? long as you can get out and do spots at night, that's yeah. all that matters. <laughs> uh, so what else? How about hobbies when you're not working? What uh, are we talking about? What do you do to relax, take your mind off of this uh, strenuous life that you have? Oh, man, uh, I love going to karaoke. You do? Like singing, that's yeah. my favorite what's thing. Your, what's your main go-to song on karaoke? Oh, I, li- I like doing like, like each morning I get up, I die a little. Can't Hold on. barely stand on my feet. What? Like something uh, like that. What, I, I, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, oh, it's, uh, what is that? That's Somebody to Love by Queen, I think. That's, uh, somebody sorry. to Love Queen. Yeah. How's it going? Uh, I, I, like, I like doing karaoke. everything. Oh, yeah, you got it. You oh, got shit. It. Cats? Well, <laughs> I got news for you, my friend. You're about to sing Somebody to Love right now in Calgary, Canada. Oh, shit. Anybody? This will be our part. Find me somebody to love. Fuck yeah, Sam Benty, ladies and gentlemen. 
live in Calgary, Canada. Each morning I get up, I die a little. Camp and stand on my feet. Take a look. He's taking off his clothes. And I cry, Lord, what you doing to me? I've spent all my years in believing you, but I just can't get no leave. Lord, somebody, 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 can anybody find me? Somebody love. Yeah, how about that? Wow. That was good. The whole crowd got behind you on the somebody's and the big finish there. Oh, Exciting, man. Sam. How, you must get all the pussy here in Canada, huh? Yeah. Did no. you notice that stopped about six years ago? Uh, I, I hang out at Twisted Element too much for that. Oh, that's cool. So you're a Canadian gay man. Uh, no, no, I was oh. just running. I was running a comedy show actually out of there uh, when I was living here last time. I just moved back to town, so I'm just kind of in transition. Okay. So Sam. It's okay if you're gay. You're allowed to say it just because you're... I know you're in Calgary around all these manly men and you feel like... But, I mean, if they're dragging anybody behind their truck tonight, it's probably uh, Lahan from earlier. Who yeah. <laughs> Lahan Olawale. And while you groan, he's laughing, you fucking idiots. While you groan, he's laughing. Just to let you fucking weirdos know. Oh, but, yes, groan away. You're so polite. Um... Jesus, oh. sounds like you're gay now, Sam. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. My goodness gracious. A lot of dudes hit on you back when you used to run that show at the uh, uh, Twisted Element? Uh, a couple. Yeah? Yeah, I had a mustache for November, so that was bad, yeah. Oh. Oh. Did you give any rides? Yeah, yeah. No? Dep depends on what, what, what the, uh, they would pay me. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my goodness no. gracious. All right, Sam. Wow. Well, uh, fun times, dude. Unbelievable sets. Really great stuff. Thanks a lot. Congratulations to you. How much time do you have, you think, total, if you had oh. to guess? Oh, uh, yeah, like a half an hour. I just, oh, I just that's did. great. Yeah. You want to do five minutes on the two shows I'm doing here Saturday night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday. Awesome. Saturday. Sweet. Oh, man. Thanks a lot, guys. You can be here Saturday? You can make it here Saturday? Yeah, I, I can do that. I can do seven that. and ten. There you go. Sam Benty, everybody. There he goes. He's on Twitter at Sammy Ray Benty. Man. There you go. How about that? He, he had one of those voices. I didn't expect him to have that voice. Like like a MC Chris or something. Oh uh, yeah, and it's you know, that's something worth pointing out in a show where we don't do that that often is take note that the two veteran comedians have extremely defined voices and projections and and styles. Like I mean, you can try to be cool, you know what I mean, and and do good. But the but the the ones that are truly taking the most extreme chances are the ones that are hitting the most home runs. So think of that if you're ever thinking about doing this. You know, start start fearlessly. You don't have to grow into it. You know what I mean? You can get better at it fast. So, you know, just something as a comedy fan, as comedy fans out there to pay attention to is, you know, maybe your style's slow. Maybe it's, whoa, I'm Sam Benty. But you know what I mean? <laughs> But it's, it's about the differences, and it's about owning it and staying in that pocket fearlessly that makes a great performer. How about one more time for Sam Benty, everybody? <laughs> He's on social media at Sammy Ray Benty. Sam Walker is Sam Walker Live, by the way. I don't know if I got that out there. And your next comedian, which anything can happen, goes by the name of Alan Paley. Alan Paley, everyone. Here we go. Here he is, Alan Paley, everybody. Come on. Thanks for the warm welcome, everyone. Looking at me, you might have a few questions. Is he, uh, is he some kind of asshole hipster? Is he a terrorist or an out-of-work oilman? And that's the one. Yep. <clears throat> Times are tough out there. It's hard to find a reason to get out of bed. For me, lately, it's been Costco poutine. <laughs> It's true. I mean, when it's tough to cope, 
drugs and alcohol, that's a little expensive. But Costco poutine, it's like $4.70. All the calories you need for a day. <laughs> it works. But uh, on the subject of drugs, I've, I've done quite a few. Uh, I've never done meth, but every time I see someone with sunken eyes wearing a hoodie, pedaling a really small bicycle full speed down the sidewalk, I think, that looks pretty awesome. <laughs> I, got, uh, I got divorced a little while ago and I had to uh, live in a warehouse. I thought it was gonna be like living in a Fast and Furious movie. Basically it was me just showering under a garden hose taped at the top of a ladder. Okie dokie, uh, Alan Paley. Hi, Alan. Welcome, welcome. How long have you been doing stand-up for? First time. Very good, Alan Paley. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Hell yeah. How old are you? I just turned 38. 38 years old. And like you last week. Hell yeah, you don't look a day over 56. That is awesome. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, so 38 years old. Uh, what do you do for a living? <clears throat> well, uh, as, a, <clears throat> as an unemployed uh, oil man, I just deliver food mainly. But uh, when the oil patch is roaring, I'm a petrotechnical consultant. Petrotechnical consultant. Fuck yeah. There's guys losing their minds back there. Just fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Oil. Blah, blah, blah. This guy's literally cheer for a substance that comes out of the ground. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to start the auto starter on my truck, warm it up. <laughs> Jesus, some tough guys out here in Calgary. Uh, and then there's Sam Benty. Um, no, no. Yeah, so Alan, this is fun. Uh, you look like uh, Jimmy Kimmel after he retires and goes like Letterman style, just like grows out his beard, doesn't give a fuck anymore. But, uh, nice. Nah, I guess so. Um, that's after he retires. He's already older than you, so it's an actually a huge insult. Um, he probably won't retire for another 20 years, so I'm putting you at about a 70-year-old Jimmy Kimmel is what I just called you. Anyway, uh, but you said nice, so I'll rack it up as nice, me being a nice guy. So, Alan Paley, you work in oil, but now you're unemployed. Why are you unemployed? It's just tough. I mean, uh, when the oil patch slows down, you don't get those big What is an rates. oil patch? It's this time of the year or something? Oil patch... <laughs> Oil patch is a, a colloquial expression for the energy sector here in the province. I mean when the oil goes dry. No? Well, it's a... Jesus Christ, Jesus listen to the Christ. oil guys losing their mind. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? Fuck you! Tesla, baby. <laughs> what did you say? Tesla, baby. Oh, yeah, Tesla. Because you own a Tesla, you don't know how oil works. Very good. <laughs> Yeah, because you didn't have gas-powered cars. Going to put them out of business someday. <laughs> yeah, N welcome to another episode of No Shit Sherlock. Mm. Uh, but until they stop self-driving themselves into ditches, I'm going to stick with my Corvette. Uh, Thank uh, you very much. Three of them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Alan Paley. Uh, so, what have you? What do you like to do for fun? You seem like the, you might be into some fly fishing yourself. Uh, I'm not that outdoorsy, actually. Uh, lately, my hobby has been building uh, computer systems for video editing. I just, oh. uh, yeah, I just sit at my desk. And Are try you to find anonymous? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting anonymous vibes from you right now. Uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not. Shadiest thing you've ever done on your computer. Tell the truth. Don't overthink it. Just go right into it. The more honest it is, we'll feel it. Don't overthink it. Go right ahead. Uh, like cyberbullying, I guess. Whoa! <laughs> All right, here's wow. the big follow-up question. Again, I implore you not to hesitate. Straight from your gut, just let it rip. Who have you cyber-bullied that we would know? Yaniv. Who? <laughs> what? There, okay, there's a, uh, there's a person in the media who's got some headlines here. A transgender, like a really gross transgender woman who, who insisted that uh, she get her balls waxed. Uh huh. By spa people. Oh my God! All right. You know Fuck. what? Maybe you should have thought about it a little bit before. Uh, <laughs> before blurting that out. My goodness! Out of all the crazy men in this audience, I can't believe you're the one cyberbullying a transgender woman. I, I, I know. 
And you would say that on a But podcast. I guess so. You know, out there working in the oil field, it rubs off on you. I mean, it's... <laughs> I thought Cyber it was going to be Terry? like a comedian or an actor right. or something. And I was actually like setting him up totally thinking he was going to say me. And yet he goes like, no, you mean this dirty transgender woman. Uh, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 So, but, but then what? Then, then you jerk off to transgender porn and you, it makes you feel all even <laughs> Stevens about it, right? Because there's something about it that you like, right? I think cyberbullying might have been an overly harsh term. Oh. You mean trolling? Like a, yeah. No, I, I think mean, gross transgender was probably the harsh <laughs> term. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking idiot. That is true. Uh, so, what makes her a gross transgender woman to you? Are all transgenders gross to you? This is really no, uh, interesting. This, I think this one in particular got uh, a little bit of heat for being icky. Why is, she, why is she icky? Because uh, Yaniv was, as a boy, uh-huh. creeping on 14 and 15-year-old girls. Was, when, he, when, when, he, when, he, when he was a kid? When he was a grown man. He was, so he was over 18. Yeah, like he'd do stuff like leave voicemails for girls like, I'm Elmo. Elmo want to see your titties bounce up and down, up and down. How wow! Do you, how do you know about all this? Wow. <laughs> Were you checking their voicemails or something? Does uh does no one? <laughs> I was pretending to be a 15 year old online. And Hold on, I want to know what that one lady right over there just yelled. I'm just curious. I couldn't hear you, but you said it with a lot of passion. What'd you say? Yell it again. It's okay. Wherever that came from, the one lady that just yelled. Everybody knows who you are now, lady. <laughs> That's the uh, g- girl from uh, the, uh, the twenty-year-old wife girl, too. By the way. Okay, let's just give her a chance to answer. Uh, okay, forget oh, it. Jesus. That wasn't that wasn't the same lady. There was another lady. Everybody protected her after that. She has a section around her of people that respect her. So uh, what's the kind of thing that you did to her online or him or whatever? I posted a picture of Rachel Notley and said. This is Yaniv on the Face app. Oh my God, Jesus, sir! No one cares what Dude, you think. You need need more attention over there, buddy. Shut okay, the fuck everybody up. relax. Everybody relax. It's always bad when uh, we have multiple people yelling at once. My bad for asking the lady what she said. No one cares about your opinions back there. <laughs> yeah, pipe down. You're sounding like a gross transgender back there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Alan, uh, fun. We appreciate your honesty. Congratulations on your first set ever. You let it rip here tonight. I found out who Yanif was because of you. Um, and we appreciate you. Alan Paley, ladies and gentlemen. There he goes. Alan K.W. Paley, P-A-L-E-Y. Yeah. Man, time is just flying here this episode. You guys think we should squeeze one more out of here, huh? All right, one more, but we mean it. This is all we can possibly do. Okay, your final comedian of the night, it appears, goes by the name of Rob McNair. Rob McNair. There's the groans around the sad people that didn't get pulled out of the bucket. A moment of relief for some. However, the stress is now belongs oh, to is. Rob McNair, who's making his way to the stage very nicely and slowly. Here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Rob McNair. So I'm in the bath the other day with my seven-year-old boy. He's a little fruity. He goes to me, hey dad, I can touch my penis to your penis. I said, oh, come on, you don't do that with other boys. He said, huh, you do that with girls? I said, yeah. He put his head under the water. He said, oh my God. He comes back up. He says, really? I said, yeah, that's how you make a baby. He puts his head under the water and says, Oh my God, comes back up, says, does mom know? That's it. 
There you go. 49 seconds from Rob McNair. I don't know. First time doing stand-up? It is. What made you want to do that? Uh, posterity. Posterity. Prince Harry, let's talk about it. Go ahead. I felt like uh, I've been, you know, listening that whole time, and that was harder to listen to than the news that my mother was killed by the paparazzi. <laughs> My goodness. I didn't know Canada had a New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My goodness. And it, it is true. You're, a, you're, a, you're sort of, it seems like Italian. Is that true? Or you just talk like that? Just talk like you that. just talk like that. How did that end up happening? Montreal, East Coast. What? Talking to the microphone. I'm from Montreal. Oh, the East Coast, Montreal. There One you go. One of those weird English guys. From yeah, Montreal. you speak. Uh, you speak French as well. Uh huh. Let me ask you this, since you know French, how would you say that last name right there? She's all wrong. It's uh, Boutillier. That's exactly what I thought. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Rob, what do you do in the oil business? Uh, you're gonna laugh. I'm in the laundry business. You're in the laundry business? Oh my God. Jesus, all the jokes I have about laundry are all washed up at this point. I can't even. <laughs> you thought, you th what do you think, this is a fucking game? <laughs> you didn't think I had more? You didn't think I had more? Yeah, do it, do it again, Tony. Do it again. What the fuck do you do in the laundry business? And, and this is just proof that Canadians need to let Mexicans cross their border. Because it's a bunch of white people up here doing their own fucking laundry. All these people. <laughs> Gotta meet Sergio, my man down in Los Angeles. This fucking guy's a machine. Everything's fucking perfectly. It comes in tight plastic bags. All right, go ahead. Uh, what do you do with laundry? Just an account manager. An account manager for laundry. You, you don't work. You don't know the guy that runs the laundry business. I do. You do. You came here with him here tonight. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's so that's good. crazy. So that's your boss. You, everything you say, you need to say into the tip of the microphone. Yeah. Just, just that it's much okay. of the tip, though. There you go. So uh, that is so much fun. You work in the laundry business. That's the whole thing. Interesting stuff. You, got, you had your first time on stage tonight. You guys are going to be able to talk about I think we should squeeze one more person out of this bucket to end the episode. We have to. Every once in a while, you just have to. We're going way too long. I'll say that. We've gone over our time. Plus, after this, uh, we are doing a massive meet and greet right here on this stage. We have posters, specific Calgary Kill Tony posters drawn by Ryan J. E. Belt that we brought, a very limited number. And we're going to uh, sign those for you and take a picture with you if you want it right after the show. Yeah, the line's going to start right over here behind yeah. Jeremiah. But before that, your final comedian of the night goes by the name of Byron Johnson. Byron Johnson. Please step back from huh? that ledge. Here we go. Step back from that ledge, my dear friend. Here he is, Byron Johnson, everybody. Guys, this is it, your final comedian of wow. Calgary's first ever Kill Tony. Byron Johnson. All right. Uh, fentanyl destroyed the relationship between me and my mom. It's a, it's a weird story. Neither one of uh, my mom or myself did it. But uh, when, I was having my little, when my wife was having my little baby girl, she, uh, she couldn't handle it after about 30 minutes of, uh, of pain, which is understandable. So she cried out for the old uh, true serum slash uh, fentanyl. And uh, so after my little baby girl was born, she, uh, yeah, no, I was pretty crazy too. Um, uh, uh, she cried out for the fentanyl and, and she got it and my little baby girl was born and uh, I'm looking around and I'm like looking at her head and my wife looks at me with her little truth syrup in her and she goes, Jesus Christ, Brian, it's not hereditary. Your fucking mother didn't roll you. That's why you have a square head. <laughs> oh, shit. 
shit. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> so that's why I was bad at my mom for wrestler, uh, whatever. Oh my goodness! Wow. So the big reveal there for anybody listening to the podcast is that he has a square head. <laughs> and and why is yeah. that again? Uh, it's apparently because uh, it's. I, I'm assuming my mom uh, didn't roll me or something. Roll you? <laughs> yeah. You know. You know that's not a thing, right? That's just. Well, uh, uh, apparently my wife lied to me then. What does that mean, <laughs> roll you? Well, if you I've, apparently what I found out too as well, I'm not, uh, uh, is that uh, I guess if you leave the baby lay too long on her back. Oh uh, my God. And I have three older brothers, so. <laughs> Prince Harry, this is you know Let's you know this? this. He's confirming this. I can confirm this. We've hit a lot of royal children in the castles, with square heads. So. Wow. Yeah, that Prince Andrew's into that type of thing, isn't he? It turns out. My they should have goodness. banished you to a pineapple under the sea, man. Yeah, you do. You have SpongeBob head. Yeah. It's there you go. There it is. Wow. Very. There's and I, I've known this square head thing because uh, I have a friend of mine, his dad, for some odd reason, like I, I moved uh, here in Alberta 15 years ago and every time I go back, I see his dad and every time he sees me, his first words are, hey there, square head. <laughs> <laughs> you know that rolling thing's still not a real I thing know. though, right? You know what, Brian? <laughs> You're making me feel How better How do you already. know about this? <laughs> Wait, you think that? Oh my God. Dave, you know Dave, are the, the regular, Dave thinks limes are baby lemons, but he thinks that's real. No, that's that's, like, that's that's a man being stupid. No, uh, this is different. If, if, if so, you parents, think if a baby lays life. too long on its back that he's going to have a square head? You think? I mean, that's I, I think that I think that the point isn't sense. exactly that he's laying there. I don't think that that makes their head turn into a square. But I think there's something sort of fucking off about this guy, and <laughs> everything goes back to parenting <laughs> at the end. You know, I had him it's laying like, on his stomach like, too long, lack of oxygen, right? Well, I always thought that maybe she dropped all my other brothers because I have three older brothers, and I thought, okay, well, she maybe she was just scared to pick me up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> Byron, what do you do in the oil business? I don't work in the oil you business. You laundry doing motherfucker. Let's no. talk about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's do it. I think uh, I just found out why your head is shaped like a box of bleach. Um, <laughs> Box of bleach. No, I uh, I actually build custom homes for a living, so I'm like, uh, yeah, square, square, yeah, square there you stuff, go. square Absolutely. walls, everything. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, very good. Thank you, and you've been doing that your whole life, just building uh, houses. I've been doing carpentry for uh, ever since I was like 10 years old. Right. Reason, sounds, but yeah. Right. You ever use your square head for anything, like to make I, uh, like straight <laughs> lines and things <laughs> like that? A like, <laughs> level. I, I can go up to a corner <laughs> and go, yeah, that's plumb. <laughs> Joel said a level. That's, you could use it as a level. Have you ever think you take your hat off again? Let me see this fucking thing. Right, oh my go. god, it looks like a pack of cigarettes. That's incredible. <laughs> that is incredible. I've never seen anything just so perfectly square before. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm thirty nine. It's like you just either take the jokes about it or just go on with it. Right, absolutely. <laughs> my goodness. Uh do you uh, you date a woman with a square head or something like uh, that? Uh no, I'm uh, total opposite. Yeah, she's uh, super round head. Yeah, yeah super <laughs> round head. Yeah. <laughs> Look like a balloon. Absolutely. Moon face. <laughs> yeah. My goodness gracious. Where'd you meet her at? Uh, I met her, ironically, at a pub. Uh, like nine yes, years that's ago. so ironic. <laughs> it's like rain well, on your wedding day. Which is ironic that you haven't done it. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Any special skills or talents that you have? Anything that you love to do that uh, you can show off or anything like well, that? Well, that's why I'm in the industry of building custom homes. Like, I build million-dollar homes for a living, so it's, that's my interests. And yeah. I own a couple companies that does, like, I build cool shit, and I just sell it online. So, yeah. That's awesome. It's you build any uh, houses for anyone famous that we might know, like Justin Trudeau or the, uh, the, go the goalie of the flames? <laughs> I would never do that, no. <laughs> You mean sex rooms? Wow, that's so Trudeau. weird. My goodness. You guys don't like them, huh? Uh, no. It's a shame. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Uh, down in America, we have a leader too, but our economy's booming right now, so <laughs> must suck to be you. He's a big believer in oil as well. All right. No, don't say that, sir. That makes it weird. He's just a su very successful president. That's all he is. Wow. Anything crazy we should know about your life other than your square head, Byron? Uh, not that I can think of. I got some, yeah, I 
because of crazy drunk times in my days. Yeah, what's the drunkest stu- dumb thing you've ever done? Uh, for, I went uh, I went back home for a uh, I live I grew up in Nova Scotia, so I fly back there, and I went back and uh, for a charity uh, buggy run, and I got so drunk that I fell in the the, uh, the pothole where everybody was pretty much pissing every night, all night. Oh. So yeah, yeah. I had to take a. I took all my fucking clothes off uh, at the party and just like hosed me down in the middle of their lawn in the middle of summer. <laughs> yeah, that was. Oh one my of god! The, uh, yeah, wow, and with a square was, head, that must be hard because yeah, you don't have yeah. like gutters on the side to let it <laughs> run down. It just fucking. I had to le- I had to look forward to get my head. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, Byron. Uh, first time doing stand up, right? Uh, second time. Second time. Yeah. What happened the first time? Uh, actually, it went pretty good, too. So that's How long ago was that? <laughs> no, I don't know because I blanked out because it it's, it's different being up on stage compared to being down there watching everybody else do it. So, And I wasn't going to sign up tonight, but my, my wife said, hey, just. You always told me you got nothing to lose, so just go up and fucking do it. Wow. Damn, look at that. What a little support system. Romantic. That you have. She, How she, lovely. She sounds like I might get laid tonight, too. She, she has the confidence of a woman married to a man with a square head. Hey. <laughs> you, <laughs> she told you, go do it. Chase your dreams. Don't be a square. Yeah. <laughs> be a square this one. episode brought to you by Squarespace.com. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there goes Byron Johnson, everybody. That's it. We did it again. Thank you to Infinite CBD. Shout out to all the references that I didn't get to use tonight. Kensington, the Marlboro Mall, uh, Calgary Stampede, the Crack Max. Oh, look at all these druggies. A lot of people don't know. I do a lot of research on every city before uh, doing an episode of Kill Tony. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, got to, we got to get through it. How loud can this place get? I can't believe it. He's all over the news, and he was here with us tonight. The great Prince Harry, Jeremiah Watkins, everybody. Why don't you turn around, do a 180 so that everybody can laugh at what Joel and I are laughing at. Come on, show them. It's so clearly it's so clearly a costume. He has the little opening in his back. Come on, show them. They're going to love it. <laughs> Look at that. Jeremiah, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, I'll be in Buffalo, Syracuse, and Albany in February, and uh, Las Vegas and Huntington Beach and a couple other dates, uh, jeremiahwatkins.com. And then Chris Stefano and Giannis Papas from History Hyenas are on Jeremiah Wonders, my guest this week. So look it up on YouTube.com. That's right. Jeremiah Watkins. Absolutely. You, Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah. Red Band and Joel have to catch a flight back to L.A. tomorrow, but Jeremiah is going to be here with me all weekend. Uh, of course, we have uh, Sam Walker opening, Jeremiah featuring on Friday, and Sam Benty opening on Saturday, Jeremiah featuring and me headlining. Trying my best to squeeze as much uh, new material out here in Calgary as I can, even though I come here once a year. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, he defended his throne once again, the great Joelberg Joel Jimenez, everybody. He's mostly sorry on social media. He's an official Ludwig artist. Joel, first time in Calgary, Canada. What are your thoughts? I love you guys. Thanks for coming out. There you go. Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. The fun train just keeps moving along for uh, these roadkill Tonys. We're going to Vancouver, Swansea, La Jolla, Ventura, Boston, and Austin coming up. Some other major announcements coming up. Other than that, Kill Tony in Vancouver. Vancouver has always been our, uh, probably pound for pound, our biggest market almost anywhere in the world. And uh, and you guys have a very special treat coming February 21st. That's at JFL Northwest in Vancouver, a giant 1,300-seat theater that is almost already a month out, completely sold out. Uh, just a couple hundred tickets left there. And so, uh, Canada, we always love you. We support the hell out of... Uh, we thank you for supporting us, I mean, and uh, we love you. Thanks, Red, God, guys. Love Red you guys. Band. 
Thank you guys. Good night. Chicken, 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 chicken